All right, hey everyone, this is Ash. Welcome back to The King's Speech. Uh, so as usual, a couple of quick things, uh, channel updates, stuff like that before we dive into uh, the chapters and stuff proper. So as usual, I've got a fan running. Like I mentioned a couple of past videos, uh, it shouldn't be too distracted or drown out my voice or anything. Uh, I just wanted to mention in case anyone was wondering what the droning sound was. Uh, there is heat waves going on in all across the western U.S. Uh, and in parts of Canada right now, so anyone that is you know, in those areas, as I am, I uh, hope you all are staying cool and safe and hydrated. Uh, I know I've been trying to get through the days with this heat and it has not been pleasant. Uh, so please, yeah, look after yourselves, look after any pets you have, uh, look after your neighbors if you can. Uh, we'll hopefully get through this uh, relatively quickly and safely. Hopefully you can't hear my little baby princess screaming her head off downstairs. Uh -huh. Yeah, with that said, uh, I'm not probably not going to do a proper channel update this week just because I've been busy uh, with work and everything else, but expect Battle Angel Elite to come back uh, sometime next week. I was going to try to get around to it this weekend, but between the heat wave and work being super busy, I just haven't had time to actually uh, commit properly to it. So since next week, when I have a couple of days off, I'll get around to finishing up the series then. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I don't think there's anything else to mention. I did mean to get around to Kaiju a little bit sooner before two chapters dropped. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, work and everything else has kept me busy. Uh, but thankfully, I haven't let too many chapters pile up. Uh, so without further ado, and with that said, uh, let's dive into Kaiju number 8, uh, chapter 37 by Naoya Matsumoto. Uh, translation David Evelyn, uh, lettering by Brandon Bobia. I pick up last time where we see, you know, kind of a bulked up Kafka in his kaiju form as we hear, oh no, number eight's fortitude is starting to surpass the Sao's estimations. And you see uh, Kikoro go, Daddy, Kafka Hibino. And you see Kafka inside going, crap, I gotta stop this thing. Gotta stop number eight. And you see Sao just reacting in surprise as uh, number eight just lunges forward and smashes a fist into the ground. And he goes, squadron style combat technique, number two twin blast. And he just does a double punch toward Kafka's side. And you see an explosion of dust. And you see uh, the Kaiju coming straight out of, out of it. With a low blow uh, straight punch towards him. And it's how just kind of puts his knees up into a defensive block. As he goes, shield maximum output. You can see that he takes a huge hit. Loses consciousness for a second with the force of the blow. As he gets sent flying back, he's like skidding to a stop. He grabs his fist, smashes them together again, gets ready to do the uh, little beam charging attack of Kaiju number twos. And you see coming in and smashing into uh, Kaiju number eight, which kind of roars with pain and sends out a shockwave of its own back, knocking his out back as well. You see Kafka watching this go, damn it, stop! And you see number eight just grabbing uh, Asao, slamming him into the wall, creating a curator as he coughs up some blood. And he goes, at this rate, I'll be the reason the director general winds up. And he looks up at Kakor looking on, uh, looking, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, looking kind of sad, frustrated, and worried. And he goes, screw all that. I'll be damned if I kill Kakor's father right in front of her. And he just got this look of... <laughs> <laughs> Determination on his face as Kaiju you number know, eight just take it over, grabs this out and just like a uh, Hulk and Avenger style, just starts smashing his body around, whipping it all around him, as Kafka screaming, and he's Kikoru thinking, if it turns out you're just another Kaiju, out to harm humanity, then I will kill you. And she sees that she's about to try. Wondering if she should take her suit out and get into combat. And she kind of stops herself and goes, I know. I know what he is. As she thinks back to Kafka's smiling face. And she goes, but I still want to believe in him. She goes, don't you dare give in to some kaiju Kafka, you clawed. And you see on the inside, he's kind of ripping himself free from like the kaiju muscle fibers and everything else that's holding him in. As you see that giant worm thing that first turned into a kaiju... Glumps is uh, its mouth is starting to come towards him. Kafka's like, huh? He's like, I'm always like this. Always screwing up when it really counts. 
And he's like a chomp as it just takes a bite out of him except for his feet. And he's just floating in his liquid pools. He goes, damn it all to hell. Damn it all to... And he sees how just lying in the crater, motionless, beaten up and bloodied. This kaiju's just about to fun, uh, is about to uh, punch him again with a finishing blow. And he goes, I was hopeful, but I see all is lost. And you see inside, Kafka's like starting to partially transform uh, into his kaiju form. Like you see his teeth and everything starting to transform. And he thinks back to Mina telling him, I'll be waiting. As his eyes snap open. <laughs> Yes. And he just yells out, Yeah! He just slams his hat straight into his chest. And the kaiju mimics the motion does the same thing. As he sees arms just impale inside of his chest. And he goes, I... I am not kaiju number eight. I'm Kafka Hibino. Yes! And you see part of the kaiju mask like shattered off. As you see his eyes staring out from underneath it. Just barely conscious, is like blood streaming out. Oh, yes, love it, love it, love it. Oh, as we get straight into the next chapter. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, so slow. Let's get to chap Kaiju number eight, chapter thirty-eight by Naio Matsumoto, uh, translation David Evelyn, lettering Brandon Bovia. We pick up with I'm not Kaiju number eight. I'm Kafka Hippino. As he just falls face first, unconscious, and his kaiju form starts dissipating around him as he goes back to his human form. And his sow goes, Put away your weapon, Narumi. <laughs> and you see all the Defense Force soldiers just surrounding him. And you see this one with this giant double bladed weapon pointed right at uh, Kafka's head. That is a weird, sick ass looking weapon. It looks almost like. I don't know how many Star Trek fans are out there, but it looks almost like the Batleth that the uh, the Klingons use. It looks exactly almost like that. And it's got the designation 01 on it. And you see a loud... <sighs> as uh, Naruri puts his hands up and signals the others to stand down. And he goes, when you didn't signal for backup, and you see Defense Force 1st Division Captain Gen Narumi goes, I assumed you were intent on dying. And you see he's got this blonde hair with like these streaks of black and these little cross-eyed uh, pupils. Or uh, cross, cross cross pupils uh, in his eyes. And this is how it goes nonsense. Though I admit he surpassed my estimations. I'm not, because I reread the series recently, just kind of like refresh myself on some things and uh, so I could talk some theories and stuff. I'm not sure if we're supposed to know who Narumi is or if he's a new character that's introduced, but whatever not a huge deal uh, and Isao goes uh, nonsense though I admit he has surpassed my estimations he goes medical team pick up number 8 on the double there's a chance that his core is damaged and Rumi goes so what do you plan on doing with him and you see Isao bandaged up as he's back at the defense force meeting he goes number 8 will hereby be used by our forces without being converted to weaponry Jeff, I object, sir. You can't utilize a kaiju while it's still alive. It's too dangerous. It's like, I'm not, and you see him thinking back to, I'm not kaiju number eight. I'm Kafka Hibino. And the sound goes, I have deemed him controllable. The fact of the matter is that he's been on assignment with the third division for several months. It's not certain that we can reproduce the level of power he displayed, even if he were converted. There's also a chance that the lack of a compatible user would land it in cold storage along with number six. He goes, now with the swarm of new Daikaiju, we will use our forces in the most optimal way possible. Jav, but there's no precedent for this. And he goes, precedent? Precedents are meaningless in the face of this nation's defense. And he goes, I assume none of you have forgotten the series of cataclysms involving number six ten years ago. Over 200 officers and three captains lost their lives. And the baldy goes, yes, along with your wife. And he goes, Japan currently has just under 30 officers who are capable of fighting a Daikaiju. In terms of solo combat, less than 10. And against identified Kaiju class threats, that number gets even lower. If a swarm of Kaiju emerges with numbers that far exceed our estimations, then this nation will easily fall into ruin. If we can utilize this extraordinary power, 
we might have a ho have a hope of a chance. And I patch goes, even so we stand opposed. You see Kafka's put up in this little liquidy healing tank with all these tubes and things attached to him as they're working on fixing up his core. And he flashes back to him, he's like, what is that? Mina crying? He's like, ah, this is he's like, come on, say goodbye to Miko. So when we took Miko to the crematorium. Kaiju, the ones who made Mina cry this much, I thought they were all irredeemable. That's why I decided if I was going to turn into a kaiju in both body and mind and body, I'd rather die as a human. You see him laid out in a hospital bed as he blinks awake and goes, I'm alive? And you hear, you're awake, are you? You see his sound just sitting there cross legged just watching him. And he's like, G General Director Shinomiya! He's like, you don't, you needn't be on edge. I'm not going to harm you. And he's just like, thank goodness. And Asao looks at him surprised. His calf is kind of like cupping his hand, head in his hands. He goes, if anything happened to you, Director General, I could never look Hikoro in the eyes again. And as Asao's just kind of silently watching, Kafka has another revelation. He goes, does letting me live mean that you recognize me as a human? As an officer, sir? He goes, if. Your chest had been housing a frail human heart, then you likely would have died back there. I'll get straight to the point. You are a kaiju. However, I'll put deciding whether or not you're a threat to us on hold. Kafka Hibino. He's like, he called me by my name. And he goes, at the moment, nearly everyone is opposed to letting you live. In order to survive, you must show your usefulness. Kafka just like grits his hands like so basically they're just letting me live to use as a weapon. He goes, sir, I consider myself a defense force officer even now and I swear I'll make you recognize me as a defense force officer as well. And you see them just exchanging like these determined glances as we then get to Kunitachi City Residential Tower, Kunitachi Floor 23 and you see a twip oh, as you see nasty Fungus spore kaiju guy. I don't know, was it number nine? Uh, like molting out of a shell. He goes, okay, I'm molted and my body is ready. Better take that kaiju power that's fallen into human hands and give it back to the kaiju. <laughs> so yeah, next chapter hits July 8th. Uh, so, I guess quick thoughts on this before we wrap up this video. Uh, yeah, so... We'll talk about was it, chapter 37 first. Uh, again, I like the combat bits. I like how we're seeing kind of... I like... Yeah, I like the... I wasn't much to say about 37 apart from I like the combat. I did like kind of Kafka's declaration of like humanity and independence where he takes back control of his body. Uh, I do really like, you know, moments like that where characters kind of... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of... Uh, cannot think what the word is basically is declare their humanity or so I'm sorry my brain is so dead right now I can't think of the proper words oh, but I think you all know what I mean by that uh, so those moments are really really great uh, this I think these two chapters also kind of cement my theory that the reason his kaiju you know kaiju body consciousness whatever the hell the bug thing went berserk was because it sensed, you know, the remnant energies, willpower, you know, intent, whatever you want to call it, of number two once uh, Sal started kind of using uh, its powers more frequently. And like when Kafka kind of, when Kafka kind of made the connections, like, oh, you know, I could feel kind of, you know, the shadow of number, kind of number two uh, behind Sal because he's using his uh, the weapon now. I think that's, for me, cements the idea that whatever infected Kafka has a vendetta against the kaiju and is basically looking for revenge so once you know kind of sensed a nearby kaiju it went berserk so kind of was like trying to let his bloodlust out uh, so we'll see if I get proven right with regards to that or not uh, which did make uh, part of the reason that's why I went back to reread the series kind of see if there's a precedent or something for this but I did find it interesting because uh, kaiju number nine was talking about you know, kaiju's kind of like capturing humans and experimenting on them, etc., etc. So I wonder if 
you know, whatever the bug thing that flew into Kafka was a result of those experiments that the Kaiju have done. You know, that's why it kind of wants a revenge against them for whatever they, you know, they turned it into and whatnot. I'll be interesting to kind of see that connection explored uh, in the future when we find out more about that. Apart from that, we're getting introduced to some of the other main characters. It'll be interesting to see Gen, whatever his name is. Because it feels like, I don't know, he just gives me kind of shady vibes. It feels like, you know, he's going to end up either turning trigger or doing something else at some point. But we've literally got one panel of him, so maybe that's a little bit uh, premature. I'm still not a huge fan of how quickly the, the all the like kaiju prejudice and the hate was just swept under the rug you know by Isao by Kokoru uh, by Mina and how they they really aren't showcasing the conflicted feelings I feel like a lot of them would have even though you know they even though they keep repeating you know we love Kafka we know who he, what kind of person he is uh, you know blah 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 etc etc I feel like there still would be some conflicted and mixed feelings regarding the fact that he was hiding this from them and regarding the fact, you know, that he is apparently now a kaiju. Uh, but I guess this early in this series, like, I guess the author doesn't want to kind of bog it down with, like, the politics and the drama of, like, you know, them, like, trying to do, like, the political things, like, oh, what are we going to do with the kaiju? How can we make sure, you know, we put in uh, contingency plans to keep them contained and all that. I guess they kind of wanted to keep the pace moving without bogging it down uh, with all, you know, kind of extraneous bits. But it does hurt the story a little bit with how quickly everyone's kind of been like, yeah, we're just going to weaponize it, no problem, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully in the next few chapters we'll see a little bit more of the tension that's going to exist between, you know, between the different officers and everyone else and uh, between Kafka and Asao and everyone else because of the decision they made. Uh, but yeah, it's still a little bit too early to tell, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing. It doesn't take away, like, too much from everything else going on. It's not, like, a huge uh, big deal, but I feel like, you know, they should have at least touched on it a little bit better than they did. That said, I feel like this is going to be... I feel like what's his face is gonna probably start infecting or take over that tower block he's in right now. We're gonna have like the next little mini arc is gonna be them like infiltrating it, kind of like you know the raid scenario, going in and trying to find the kaiju. I don't know if it's gonna end with number nine being taken or if it's gonna be like you know number nine is gonna be like the recurring rival that Kappa keeps uh, bumping into and running into. Uh, you know they constantly clash them up. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, what kind of development he's uh, going to be given in the next few chapters. Uh, but apart from that, Kaiju Number 8 is still one of my favorite series running in Jump right now. Uh, Kafka is still one of my favorite protagonists, uh, also in Jump right now. Uh, can't wait to see where the next arc is going to go uh, from here. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I'll have, after this is finished recording, I'll get uh, Spy Family videos and One Piece videos out as well pretty quickly. Uh, so hopefully all of those should be out by this afternoon at some point. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'll have Battle Angel Alita out sometime next week, along with the channel update on, you know, times and dates and things uh, for when I'm going to get back to the other series. Uh, as always, if you like my content, please do like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Till next time, this is Ash. Talk to you all later.